like to call the meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Flags in the back. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thanks for coming, everybody. Made it through our monsoon about an hour ago. Can you guys hear me in the back? Is the volume okay? Yeah. Good, good. All right, sounds good. I want to make sure. Everyone, just about everybody has mics up here, so we don't have to share so much. Um, roll call, please. Sandy Kufo? Here. Chris Regan? I am here. Christy Hiltman? Here. Artie Bryson? Here. Cindy here. Valentine? Here. Joanne Shirky? Here. Mark Bichard? I am here, too. <laughs> Good. We're glad to have you, Mark. <laughs> okay, we're all here. Uh, first thing, uh, bills payable. Entertain a motion. I'd like to make a motion to approve bills payable in the amount of one hundred twenty-nine thousand two hundred thirty-six dollars and seventy-three cents. Support. Okay, motion and support. Any uh, questions on anything? Yes, um, I just would like to uh, ask Cindy about the water point here. The Ferry transportation, Champions Auto Ferry. It seems like a hot dollar in the water fund. What were they doing on the island so much? $820. Yeah. I did ask John about that. Um, he indicated they did have some issues where they were bringing over their um, excavator a couple of trips. And then at the end of the year, I believe everyone for their four trucks bought a book of tickets just prior to the upcoming year. Thank you. Would the cleanup been in that too? That yes. was part of it. Yep, that was I would clean up with all the containers. Yep, that would have been part of it. <laughs> Any other uh, questions or discussion? Very none. Roll call vote, please. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hillman? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufo? Yes. Okay, motion passes. Next, we have public comments. If anyone has any public comments, we've got a podium back there. You hand them a mic, put your mic there. Right here. Yes, the mic is silent. Where are you going, Stel? At the podium. <laughs> You just where you want me, sure, right? Sure, sure. Hi, I'm Estelle waller -Zach. I live at 10371 St. John Drive in Clay Township, the historic Pearl Beach area. The residents of St. John's North Channel Waterfront respectfully want answers regarding questions to Section 3.11-1. As the new planner stated last month at the Planning Commission, all rear setbacks will remain the same and that section 3.11-1 will stay as is. Our confusion is with this board ignoring a ZBA motion requested by the building department for an interpretation on section 3.11-1 on what to plant. The ZBA included arborvitaes in section 3.11-1, but arborvitaes go beyond the height requirements of shrubs three feet and trees pruned to eight feet. I would like to show the board three pictures. I think it's three. Three pictures that we took in violation of section 3.29 that said the unobstructed yard space should be void of all structures, buildings, shrubberies, trees, and any similar landscaping above the height of three feet. They carried it all the way to a neighbor's patio that has completely blocked a view. Um, trees pruned to eight feet, which our providers do not follow. It was the ZBA who determines the interpretation, which was done two months after a home occupancy. We were fine with the home at the time of home occupancy. They did not violate anything. But the residents did not find out until five months afterward when additional arborvitaes were planted on May 19, 2017 on top of the other 50 already planted on the east side of the property from the street to the front of their home, blocking and encroaching of views from my home and a few others. Residents who have all lived there longer, why was the newest build allowed to change an 80-year history of panoramic views? 
The views of the North Channel are controlled by the state of Michigan. They are navigational waters. We have protect Great Lakes Protection Act, and it's under the public trust doctrine. Um, the newest bill allowed to change this history, and within the 40-foot setback, there was, under uh, our zoning, it said all rear setbacks should be cleared of any structures or anything within the 40-foot setback. And why did the ZBA say privacy for residents at a ZBA meeting that only handles appeals? No residents present to agree to privacy. There are 68 homes on the North Channel. We, 50 of us, signed a petition which we presented to the Planning Commission and this board that said we do not want fences, we don't want anything blocking a view, we want to keep the history. When not one resident was present at this board, it never mentions in the minutes of the planning or any exceptions to the rule. We have fence ordinances protecting the view. We have an unobstructed yard space protecting the view. But the newest bill was allowed to create a visual wall to encroach on the view of neighbors who have lived there longer than them. We have read every meeting minute of planning, this board, and the ZBA. There are no mentions of any allowances to build a permanent structure within that rear setback. We have a renovation going on in our neighborhood. We obtained through the FOIA a picture of the renovation, which the description said it would be 13 feet 4 inches. Why was the second level allowed to go out 15 feet and go beyond the 330 foot rule? Why the state of Michigan protects any navigational shores of waters associated with the Great Lakes? The North Channel is included for the public to walk private properties and not trespass. The health department across the United States, all health agencies warn of the West Niles virus, which our providers hoard these birds and mosquitoes and spiders that increase the potential of West Niles virus. So this board, the Planning Commission and ZBA have ignored the health of its residents, ignored the history of 80 years, and not protect our residential neighborhood. We are not the only ones. Your own chairman of the board, Mr. Trepa, also stated in approved minutes how overbuilt Anchor Bay is, but you still allow more and more to go on, ignoring the vision set forth in this township's master plan. We have proven these arbor by design violation of section 3.11-1 and .3.29 and want them removed for the health of our community. If 50 residents who have lived there longer on St. John do not want our history and our health issues compromised and want our views back, which are not straight ahead, that was a fence issue in the state of Michigan. Sid Brown in approved meeting minutes told one of the clients that was fences that had nothing to do with the views. But yet when you talk to somebody in the building department, only two people told us your view is straight ahead. That is incorrect and it was a lie. It's not the panoramic views that we paid for before the newest home was built. We insist this board remove them privacy for residents. The ZBA had no attendees, just one appeal. The meeting lasted 45 minutes that killed our waterfront history. And we feel it was prejudiced and biased for only one new home and it benefited them. And they're the only one who created a visual barrier. They forgot that we have 165 long docks from the seawall. We can see all the homes east and west. There is no privacy. They sunbathe on a patio just like us, no privacy. In bathing suits, we board our boats. We take off our, on, onto our boats and fish off the docks and entertain on our decks, our patios, and our properties. No privacy. Then why were they, the new neighbors, allowed to do this? A lot of whys. And one year later, we still have no answers. Fifty residents agree we bought for the views. And our homes reflect that view with living rooms and kitchens to the water. Privacy in our homes, not outside on the land. Now section 1.04 says in order to grant a building permit, you have to present a plan, an architectural drawing, et cetera, et cetera. We obtained that plan of an architectural drawing that said it was going to be straight up and down, 13 feet, 4 inches. But when they finished it and they're doing the sprinkler and lawn system, we have nothing against the people themselves, but everything against the building department allowing these violations of our ordinances. Thank you. Um, 
want to get a hold of you tomorrow, okay? So. No problem. I'll give you my number after. All right. Thank you. Go ahead. <coughs> Thank you. My name is Jack Sears. I live on uh, Golf Course Road. And uh, I've been a resident for quite a few years. And I have a lot of history. But my question is, uh, is it has grown quite a bit. It looks great. But simply, I just want to ask one question. When are we going to slow down paying taxes and not keep spending people's money? I am retired, and it's hard for me. I don't. Get, I do not get raises, and I, I wish there was something that people would just slow this down a little bit. Thank you. Okay. Here the mic. <laughs> Board, already thank you for letting me speak. Yep. My name is Jerry Victory. We live at five one four five Green Drive on Parsons Island. For summer residents, we get to pay the taxes, but we don't get to vote. But something in this new fire bond issue... We're, we're going to be talking about that in a little bit. That's I'll fine. I'll say my piece. I'll, re I'll recognize you then. Okay. okay. You'll have plenty of chance to talk. Okay. <clears throat> my issue with this, with this bond issue is the method that we're paying for the equipment. No issue with the equipment. You've identified the need. The need's there has to be done. But I've learned a lot about how municipal debt is paid for, and we should all be very, very concerned. Municipal debt is not amortizable debt. We are stuck with a bill of $1.7 million in interest on this bond. Wrong number. Based on what you told me, that's what it is. No, it's, uh, it's going to be about 800000 It's not what you told me, but anyway. Paying a lot of interest for equipment that we should be able to buy up front. A small assessment on every tax parcel, <clears throat> excuse me, in the township would allow us to pay cash for this equipment, carry no debt. We have to stop the debt train. We keep leaving this legacy debt for generation after generation, and that's what's killing us now. It's happened, it's going to happen with this, it's going to happen with the school. It's going to happen. It's happened with the water department. It has to stop. We all complain about debt, but we all keep perpetuating it. It's time that the voters stand up and say, enough is enough. Let's figure out how to pay for this stuff without acquiring the debt. It can be done. It's a local issue. You can control it. It's not the state's responsibility. It's not the federal government's responsibility. We all complain when we're told what to do by the state and local government. This is up to us. We can do something about this. Thank you. My name is Nelson Pikes. <clears throat> I have a uh, piece of property, a cottage over on, uh, well, it's year round home also, 528 Green Drive. I want to bring up something sort of relevant to what Mr. Victory talked about, the reimbursement costs associated with school elections. I don't know how many people know that if a school election is held on a regular election day, like in November, there is no charge except for the the, the amount that it costs the school uh, that it costs to put it on the ballot. If it's held in May or a different time at a special election, the school board pays 100%. Why do they hold these elections in May? I know why. I think most of you do. Uh, if the election is held in May, there's a low board turnout. If there's a village on the agenda, the people will vote. <clears throat> the uh, school board, uh, not school board, the school employees, the teachers, all their family friends will vote, hoping that they will pass the millage. I don't think that's right. I am paying almost double school tax since 1968. Double, double school tax. I can't vote here. It's ridiculous. It's the most unfair law. 
the people in Clay Township can raise my taxes. They just voted recently, a few years ago, to raise the taxes for 11 years, and we have no say in it at all. I think that's horrible, and it's, it's not right. Thank you. Did, did, have you mentioned that to the school board? Because that's who I don't. I have no say. I'm not a resident. Okay, but that, that's who you need to talk. I mean, ask them why. Well, they, they, well I, is anybody? Is anybody here for the school board? No, I don't think so. They wouldn't answer it anyway because they know what it is. Right. Thank you. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kathy Harrison. I live at 301 Monroe. Already in the board, my comment and my opinion is. First of all, Artie, do you know how many patrol cars Clay Township has? Uh, it varies on, you mean out patrolling? It, it varies from time to time. Well, with the amount of taxes I pay for the fire department, which I believe is going by the wayside, and for the police department, I would like to see more police patrolling the island at least twice a day once at 11 in the morning and at 6 in the evening to see what we islanders see. Speeding, kids on mini bikes, four wheelers, but most of all the golf, golf carts. I already am not blaming everyone who drives the golf carts. Basically what I see is the younger generation and the visitors visiting with their relatives. According to ordinance number 138, off-road vehicles states that a golf cart should be operated by a person not less than 16 years of age, and each passenger is wearing a properly adjusted and fastened seatbelt. I saw just over this weekend a golf cart with eight people in it hanging all over. Seatbelts, I doubt it. Mom sitting out in the back of the seat holding on to little toddlers making sharp turns. Boys and girls who aren't 16 of age driving golf carts. Artie, the golf cart rules will never be properly enforced. That's why I think I would like to see more police <coughs> riding around the island and issuing tickets. Thank you. I'm Chuck Miller, uh, 5178 Green Drive, Harsons Island, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to vent party here tonight. Uh, my comments tonight are not directed at the board or the fire chief. We, we have no issues there. Uh, I'm focusing on the people of Clay Township and their long-term welfare. And by the people of the township, I mean both the taxpayers who can vote in our elections but also the numerous taxpayers who do not have the privilege of representing themselves, even though they pay a disproportionate share of the taxes. My point is simply that the continuing upward spiral of the financial burden on, this tax, on the taxpayers here has attained a level that is extremely onerous to all of us, whether we're on the one end of the spectrum or the other. And in the near term, it's unsupportable in the long term, just simply put. It's time for we, the voters, and I want to emphasize that, to sit back and reflect on the huge value of a no vote. That vote that we can give in a community is immense, and we don't use it enough. I won't mention sheep in the flock in the, in the fields, but it's, I think of it, okay? Now, I hope that this gathering would, would generate some more interest in this respect in terms of, of, of continuing a dialogue regarding these kinds of tax issues that we constantly find ourselves with. Because the poor decisions today will create unacceptable legacy costs. It's already been mentioned a couple of times. Unacceptable legacy costs for our children and our grandchildren, especially those that we hope will become our beneficiaries on this in this township mainlanders just forgive me for a second when i talk about this but i have a, an example of something that was done in the 2000s 
that I, I want to I want to use it as a demonstration of, a, of a, an excellent way to disclose these tax issues. And I just happen to have this here. This is from 2006, and it in it in, it is the special assessment installment bill for the water line on the island. And again, it's local to the island, so forgive me, whoever's watching that's on the mainland, this didn't hit you, this was our problem. The important thing about this document is what it represents. Let me just mention it. A single document shows up in my, my mailbox and it says, current year principal installment for that particular funding. And you guys that are around here remember that. And I paid two hundred eleven dollars. Okay. Current year interest, I paid one hundred and eighty dollars. Almost as much as the cost of the principal of the loan for interest rates. And I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that was a twenty-year deal. That one, yeah. Okay. Now, now, so I was paying three ninety, three ninety-one on that bill. Okay. But interestingly enough, there's a line item in here that says payoff amount. Now the payoff amount, as I understand it, was hard dollars, cash. You pay me up front, I'll, and you will buy yourself out of this long-term debt. That's a payoff amount. Let's screw this interest for 20 years, just pay it off. Well, at the time, I couldn't do that. So I was into this routine, okay? Well, I should mention that I was five years into this. I was paying $30,164 on this particular tax bill, five years into it, and I had 14 years, 15 years running yet, okay? Paying roughly equivalent on the interest and the principal, okay? Well, the problem is, even though this particular special assessment was only focused on the islanders now, all right, when we relate it back to what we're talking about with this fire situation, it's spread across the entire township, all right? So we've got a much greater population we're dealing with. Now, the thing I like about this document is it's concise, it's clear, and it's very, very informative. One year later, this format went away, and I had a one-line item, just like we get today. All it says is, hey, here's your money, pay it. Okay? Sorry. Okay. So, to make a long story short, this plan didn't work. We had to refinance it. We had to go back and rework the whole damn thing. Because why? There was poor assumptions. Poor assumptions, poor financing, poor forecasting. Artie's just telling you, okay? It was a screw up. Let's keep that in mind. All right. So he went back to the drawing board. We got a refinancing plan. And yeah, we, we, we saved money with respect to the costs of maintaining the plan. But that debt's still out there. It's still there. We're going to owe it someday. Now, let's consider the sinking fund millage. Do you know exactly where that money is going? Do we know? Does the bond statement that's being voted on tell you where that money's going? I already did some workups on where some of this money might be going, but we don't really know, okay? I've seen numbers like $110,000 to do something here on the island for infrastructure, uh, ventilation systems and all that. Has to all go towards capital improvements. Has to go toward capital improvements. We went online and found a, a, a company that will give you a budgetary estimate for two bays for $10,700. Now, what's in that 110 that includes more than what I'm thinking is the ventilation system for a two bay fire truck, fire system? Okay? I don't know. Now, but we're, we're faced with voting on this now in August. All right, so I guess the question is, are you prepared to pay the interest on that debt? And let's go back to the school system again. Are you 
prepared to pay the interest on that debt with that school system with a declining enrollment for the next 20 years? Are we really ready to entertain getting into another 20-year deal for replacing problems with the fire department? Replacing problems created by predecessors now. I'll take that off, Artie. Replacing problems that pre-existed, just like the school, okay? But we have to foot that bill. Long-term legacy cost. Bunk. Now, paying all that interest, you and I both know we get nothing for that. Nothing. It's our pleasure to be able to borrow that money, okay? So the fire bond, it's the same old story. We go to long-term debt because it's saleable to the public. Everyone needs a good fire service. Nobody arguing about that, all right? Trouble is, we're right back. We're fixing problems that were created by prior administrations and mismanaged operators and operations. And obviously, I could go through some of that too. The existing fire trucks were bought used, so we could save money. Right. Okay. Near-term thinking. Okay. Now we have to pay the piper to saddle the future generations with expensive interest payments. Ah. Do we know exactly where that money's going to be spent? You heard me say that again before. Since this dialogue has really burned up a little bit, we've been able to get more information on where this money's going. It's become a little bit more fluid, a little bit more detailed, which is excellent. But we're nowhere near being where we need to be in terms of understanding this issue. Okay. So, the financing options simply haven't been fully examined. It's that, it's the bottom line. And what I'm asking is that we vote no on that bond issue and send it back to the board and ask Mr. Bryson and his team to go back over that puppy one more time and rethink it in view of some of the examples that I've just shown you and some of the options that are available to us or we hope they're available to us with a little creative twisting of the screw, okay? And, and maybe in the long run, something will come out of this in, in, in the longer term that's beneficial to all of us, and we can move forward, get our fire trucks, upgrade all our facilities, and get moving. That's what I hope happens. The value of no is extreme. Now, in closing, just let me say this. Artie, board, please stop bringing us tax burdens that tie us to long-term legacy costs, okay? And start bringing to us proposals that are positive and look at investment opportunities for the future. Understood. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'd like to thank the uh, board for the opportunity to speak again tonight. This is the uh, second time I've got the opportunity to be presented in front of the Clay Township Board. My name is uh, Ken Nickel. Um, I probably uh, am the uh, uh, what doesn't belong here uh, in terms of living on the island. I live in Yale, Michigan, 13645 Fisher Road. I'm running for the 81st District State Representative on the Republican ticket. Um, I feel that uh, the only way that I can get out and make certain that people know who I am and, and uh, uh, important to make certain that I represent the right people is coming out to talk to people. I spent the bulk of today uh, uh, both on the island and in Clay Township walking. Unfortunately, already I did not miss the monsoon. You'll notice my attire. I had to change because I had wet khakis, and I didn't think that would be a very good, uh, appropriate attire here tonight. One right in here. <laughs> yeah, very good. Um, I just want to give a little bit of background uh, of who I am and, and uh, what, what I uh, stand for. Um, 
So right now, there is a very large field, in case you haven't seen, there are eight individuals running for the uh, state representative 81st district, which is the current seat that Dan Lowers uh, uh, is term limited in. So I feel I have to distinguish myself from the pack. And the first thing is, I may have been on your porch today, um, but I, I think that's important to come to where you reside. Um, I, I have a lot of literature that people will send out, and you will get some mailings from me as well, but I need to make certain I come to uh, tell you or, or ask you what and how you want me to represent you. Um, I, I believe I bring a collective life experiences for this job. Um, I've been married for 26 years, and I like to say to the same woman, um, which is true. I've raised three young men. Um, I currently have a senior in high school this coming year, and my oldest son is getting married Saturday. So uh, this is exciting times for me and my family. Um, I live in Yale, Michigan, which is the bologna capital of the world. For those of you who haven't been up to the bologna festival, it's on the 28th of, uh, of uh, July. I will hope to see you there. But I feel that not only uh, my life experience uh, it, with a family has given me a game perspective, I truly understand the challenges that families are facing. And I'm going to get to a couple of the themes that were mentioned tonight. In my real life, my job, and I might get stoned for this, is I am the superintendent of Yale Public Schools. I am the longest seated superintendent in St. Clair County. I'm entering my ninth year serving the community and district. And I will tell you this, because I, I heard the theme tonight about taxes and monies that are, are, are being reduced from families. I can tell you that the past three years, I have run an under budget, $18 million budget. So I'm fiscally responsible. Two years ago, I came under $272,000. This past year, it's going to be about $80,000. Next year, I'm projected to be under $400,000. I don't like to come to my tax base, my constituents, to say, I need money. That's why they pay me, to make certain that I'm maintaining a good budget. And by the way, we put out an outstanding product. Um, Yale Public Schools is very honored to have two of our three elementary schools are reward schools. No other community in this entire county can, can boast that. So I, I feel that I, I certainly am fiscally responsible and I do my job and I think I do it very well. Additionally, um, from my perspective, I think there's a community theme and that theme kind of dovetails nicely into my platform. And it's really putting money back into people's pockets. I, as I indicated, I have three children. They're 22, 20, and 18. And, and, and mo both my wife and I, I have the same challenges that you do. We try to make certain we make ends meet. And with three boys, uh, it's very difficult to do. But what was said tonight on taxes resonates with me. Because certainly from my perspective, my background, I want to roll back the Grand Home State Income Tax. I want to uh, repeal taxes on pensions. That should have never happened. You're already getting taxed on that money when you earned it. And there's no way that you should be taxed on it again. And I think that's absolutely ludicrous. Additionally, I have five drivers in my home. We pay $6,000 a year the privilege to drive a car. And my three children, I guarantee you, are driving beaters. I have a Dodge pickup truck out in the parking lot. Um, and so we are not living an extravagant lifestyle. But I pay $6,000 a year. We need to lower our, our, uh, what we pay for auto insurance. Um, from a perspective uh, of who's behind me, and I'll, I'll give you the most important endorsement that I've received. Of the eight candidates, I'm the only candidate that has the Michigan Right to Life endorsement. That tells me that my moral compass is pointing the way I want it to be pointed. Um, uh, I'm part of the Sacred Heart Church. I'm a Knights of Columbus member. I'm a third degree, as are my two oldest sons. And so, uh, and my third son, who's a squire, as soon as he becomes of age, will also become a Knights of Columbus member. 
And then additionally, I'm the only member of the eight-man field that Sheriff Tim Donnellan endorses as well. So I feel that uh, knowing that I have both he and Mike Wendling, prosecuting attorney, uh, at, on my side, I think that uh, also tells me that I'm doing something right. Lastly, I, I don't make promises because I'm not a politician. I don't do this for a living. I absolutely don't do it for a living. But I think I bring the skill set, I bring the experience that I can get results. My youngest son um, uh, said to me, Dad, you need a catchy little slogan. People will remember. I said, what do you got? He said, first of all, yes, we can. I said, swing and a miss, son. What else you got? He says, how about this one? Nickel just makes sense. And I'm hoping that nickel makes sense for you guys as well. Um, with that last slogan, I did tell him he will continue to eat in my house because that wasn't <laughs> bad. So I appreciate the opportunity. Um, if you didn't get a chance to see me, I've been down here in Algonac in Clay Township an awful lot. And it's not because uh, I, I think it's anything else other than I need to meet people. I need to be uh, in the backyard of St. Clair County. I want to make this area continue to be an outstanding place to raise families and raise children. Thank you for your time. I very appreciate it. Good evening, folks. Thanks a lot for letting me talk again the board. My name is John Cameron. I live at 2165 South Channel Drive. Uh, just as a sideline, my family's been on this island since 1890-something. And I want to say this. All during the years, the people on this island have maintained the school, the fire department, and other things around here that needed doing. We didn't come over to the township and say, we need some money to build a fire hall. Or we need some money to do this or that. We did it ourselves. <clears throat> I would say that it would be very easy for all of us if someone in the, in the township or in the fire hall would go out and get a quotation on this ventilation system and on the, the bathroom that needs fixing and on the kitchen that needs fixing and su submit a bill or submit a quote to us on the island and ask for the money. I'm telling you right now, I'm sure you get the money overnight. We got the money overnight for the school, we, no matter what happens sir. So this baloney about having a tax to do something is crazy. The last time they did the roads, they made a mess out of all the roads on the, on the north end of the island. And what happened? They got the money and walked away. Nobody said boo. So anyway, that's my song, and uh, I, I hope that uh, something's going to be done about it. Thank you. is Donna Halakaglu and I live at 898 North Channel Drive. Uh, first of all, I'd like to state I agree with Kathy Harrison. This community on the island is simply a lawless community every weekend. It jumps 10 times, 20 times more the amount of people, probably more than that. And there just isn't the patrolling around. And it is lawless. There are people breaking laws, doing things that they shouldn't be doing, and there's nobody there to stop it. And there's no one to call because the township is closed at, on Thursday. For call the, dispatch 24-7. Okay. Well, as far as ordinances that are being break, broken? That's where you call it, okay. dispatch. Okay. Well, that's fine then. I, okay. I'll remember to do that. The other thing I want to talk about, and I want to ask if this can be addressed, is illegal, illegal dumping of grass clippings alongside the road. Now, I'd like to particularly talk about the stretch from the Crispin Drain to Little Road. There are people that are dumping grass clippings. It looks bad, it smells bad, and it certainly cannot be good for the environment with all the pesticides and all the fertilizers that are in the grass clippings. They're in the canal, they're now even on the side of the road. 
Is there a possibility that science could be put up for something like this? I do believe that is a DEQ regulation that you can't do that. And uh, I will check into it. Okay, because it really is very unsightly. Thank well, you. Right, well, what it does, it puts fertilizer into the... Exactly. And, and then you get algae blooms. Yeah, well, go look. It's, yeah. it's there. I'll it's, check into it's it. It's all there. Thank you. My name is Tim Snary. I'm at 5332 Middle Channel Drive. Uh, two things I'd like to talk about. Number one uh, is more of a form of a question, Hardy. Um, as, a, as, as a resident of the Middle Channel, uh, when I need to use a boat ramp, I go down to the boat ramp by Browns. Uh, that thing is in such bad repair that I'm afraid that someday it's going to break the trailer trying to get through there. Um, it's not that we haven't done anything. We called the DNR, all right? DNR said it's not their responsibility. They said that the park district, and we should call the park district uh, for the county. So we did that. They said, we don't have any budget for that. Yeah, the, the DNR, uh, actually the same uh, people who run the Elgnac State Park are in charge of the access sites. I can call them up. Dennis Wilson's his name. Okay, we'd appreciate it because yeah. it is really in bad shape, particularly with the water level at the at the point that it is I'll, now. I'll tell them to lower the water too. Yeah, <laughs> would you do that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Secondly, um, I'd just like to talk for a second about this problem that we're having with these uh, in the back end of uh, Little Muskamook Bay. Every weekend, we have this big conglomeration of boats that go out there, and some Yahoo, who I'm told is a disc jockey, or was a disc jockey, is out there with loudspeakers and some of the language that he uses is absolutely foul. And last year, uh, my wife and I complained, and we actually went to a, uh, a court proceeding in Port Huron, and uh, the man was fine, but the fine was so little it didn't mean anything to him. He just took change out of his pocket and paid the fine. I'd like to know if there's anything further that can be done about that thing. Now, my understanding is last year that it's not the township's responsibility, it is the city's responsibility. So what happened was... County. Uh, the county? Okay. So the county doesn't have a boat to get out there. So the time... <laughs> The, the sheriff finally had to take the county uh, officer out there, at which point the, the uh, uh, ticket was issued to the man, and then we had to go to court with the thing. Uh, but I'd like to know if something couldn't be done again, because, I mean, it is getting absolutely ridiculous. The amount of, particularly when the blow, wind blows towards the middle channel, uh, it's like a zoo out there. And that's all I have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay, Mark, Mark, we'll grab your mic for time. Please. Okay, moving right along. Uh, thank you, everybody. Actually, this is why we like coming over right here. Believe it or not. Um, consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. <laughs> I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda consisting of the board meeting minutes of July 2nd, 2018 and synopsis, check reports, the May water report, June assessing report, 
Uh, also the June building and zoning and code enforcement reports. Notice from Roadwatch for the week of July 16th. Communication, which is a thank you note from the Historical Society and a request for Assessor Lawton to attend training for $24, for $25. Support. Okay, a motion support. Does anyone have any questions or any issues with the consent agenda as presented? Hearing none, all in favor of the consent agenda signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. All right. Uh, next to our supervisor's report. It's not that long today, but I do have to do a little filling in. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to mention we did have an open house at our uh, um, fire department on the island Wednesday. I, I actually was trying to keep a count, but I lost count. I think we had somewhere about 60 people. It was, it was fairly well, uh, well uh, um, attended, thank you. And uh, we are going to have one on the mainland. Uh, it's going to be Wednesday, August 1st from 4 to 7. Wednesday, I've been talking to a lot of people about this. Wednesday, uh, I had a meeting, a uh, second meeting actually, is with uh, FEMA Coastal Flood Hazards, a FEMA Coastal Flood Hazards workshop. And whenever we see FEMA, my blood kind of curdles and I, I get kind of grumpy. And um, they'll be uh, given us, uh, or, or I, I actually put them online, I don't know if you saw them, but they're reviewing the, the flood maps going forward. And they're gonna have a new zone of velocity, uh, it's basically windblown water. If you go on that map, it's yellow. Um, but I've been really hammering them the past couple, three years. If a guy on my left goes get a, a, cert, a, a flood elevation certificate and he's out of the floodplain, and the guy on my right has one and he's out, out of the floodplain, why do I have to spend the 500 bucks and have one done? It's not like we have mountains and valleys here. And so they, they did take a lot of that in consideration. I, I have to give them credit for that. And um, they, uh, the, this new map is actually taking, where is I got to jump, I got to uh, 1,212 homes out of out of the floodplain zone in our area. Um, actually, a lot of the south channel, like north of somewhere north of San Susi, and the north channel is out. I mean, before it was all Harsons Island was totally out. A lot of the areas, like in the bird lanes and on the mainland and, and uh, south, there's quite a quite a large amount of people that we're not, we're in the floodplain zone that are going to be out of it. That's, that's a good, good thing. Um, it's still kind of questionable how they're going to, uh, um, what they're going to do with this uh, velocity, velocity, this windblown water in that area, but it's very small. I think it, it affects 48 structures and most of those are kind of like boat houses, not even homes. But, you know, I, I was going to say, you know, I'm going to be at this meeting. I, I always, my guard's up high, always when I deal with FEMA. And to, just to reiterate, Clay Township pays $680,000 a year in flood plane or flood insurance. Over, and I can't remember, these are old numbers, over since it all started, we're at about $36 million that this township has paid. And that's off of, straight off of people's mortgages. And I, I, I just think back when people were having problems five, six years ago, how many homes this could have saved and foreclosures. I mean, I mean, it just, I gotta stop talking about it. I, I, I'll get ticked off. But um, it, 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 it's quite a concern, needless to say, and what we get back in return from that, all that money, it, it, it's nothing. I've been talking to people in Washington and different, uh, trying to give them different solutions to the problem, maybe make a, a Great Lakes 
instead of us paying money to help out people in Louisiana, let's make one just for the Great Lakes. That way our, our what we pay in our premiums would reflect more on our risks, because our risks are very low. Well, I just sold up on my house on the South Channel. They said that you're in a 100-year floodplain zone. My house is 135 years old and it's never been wet, so how can it be in the 100-year floodplain zone? Yeah. You know, <laughs> it just doesn't make sense. But anyhow, I just want to let the board know that I, I have that coming Wednesday. Uh, been spent a lot of time with the Colony Water Project, uh, with the bids, getting that out, and we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that later. Um, and again, to your situ or your call, getting, getting a lot of calls about, uh, you know, problems with uh, waves, uh, no wave violators, uh, not adhering to the 200, 600 foot rule. Uh, I had many conversations this past week with uh, the sheriff, with the, the Marine uh, Patrol uh, uh, Sheriff, uh, Mr. Reed. Um, bottom line is they need more enforcement. And I, I tried, been trying for two years to get more, more well, it's not boots on the ground, it's propellers in the water. I bought a megaphone. And, uh, Right, and uh, potato cannon works better. Um, <laughs> same. Um, it, it, it would take 75 grand to put, we need at least two boats. I, well, we need three boats in this area, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. We need two boats Wednesday and Thursday, and at least one boat Monday and Tuesday. We don't have that. And, um, I, I, I tried working with them. We put signs up to a lot of its education. We have two buoys. We're allowed to put two buoys on the middle channel. I know they're helping. They're not that, you know, doing that great, but I mean, it's better than, I mean, we're doing all we can. The township does have free sandbags for people. Uh, it is up to you guys to protect your own property. You know, we can't do it, but we do have free sandbags. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's frustrating for me too. Can I give you a suggestion? Real quick. The DNR was out on Sunday patrolling. Yeah. patrolling. You've, we've got thousands of acres of DNR land oh, I know. in Clay Township. Yep. I know that DNR the patrols too. DNR. I know Ben Lasher real well. I talk to him and all the time. Get him out here. I, I'm okay. We've I got have. a problem, guys. I have. I have. But and that doesn't cost us anything. Yes, it does. Well, we're paying for it. Right. This, is, this is a super. Work. This isn't for public comments right now. I'm sorry. Um, Just giving you a suggestion. Thank you. Uh, we've been active this past couple of weeks on dangerous buildings. Uh, we did remove the dangerous uh, uh, building. Has been removed on Anchor Bay Drive, and uh, I'm sure the neighbors up there are very happy. Uh, we were working on the sunken houseboat at the marina down here. And uh, they took off the upper structure on it, but the, the barge is still there. He is being fined, as we speak, $200 a day. And uh, I'm going to, uh, I know there's an email which I sent to me late from our attorney. So I told him we're going to take him back to court and put in the $200 fine judgment against him. Plus, I want to be able to go and get our own marine contractor to remove the property and charge it back to him. So I'm assuming that's what my email says, but like I said, I haven't read that yet. yet. Um, it takes a lot of work to get this stuff enforced. That's what people don't realize. And uh, like uh, the, the, we took the guy to court for um, the noise last year in the Bay. We're gonna start writing tickets now, but it, it takes a lot of work and expense on our part to get it and some, oh, okay, I'll just pay the fine and keep going. And we are looking at putting more teeth in that ordinance somehow. We can. I think we can only charge $500, so max. Uh, that's all the state allows us to, to charge. So. Okay, uh, things are on track uh, for the uh, Harsons Island Nature Park on the uh, grant to purchase the nine acres over by the Schoolhouse Grill. Uh, that's going very well. They had a site visit, and it went very positive, and I... Uh, I, uh, 
They're going to uh, ask us a few question, follow-up questions to the grant application in August, and hopefully in September or um, October we'll, we'll have it awarded and set up a closing date on that property very soon after. Um, I, I, I've been getting a few uh, uh, phone calls about some airplane that was spraying some kind of something over the, the flats area, St. John's, and out here. Does anyone, does anyone have any, seen it? or Because I've been talking with the DEQ, or we need to find if this actually happened and there's some residue from what was sprayed, we need to collect that and see what it was. It was not the DNR. I mean, this is the wrong time of year to sp spray for frags. No, they always used the helicopter. And I, this, is, I told, was from a, from a plane. So if anybody knows any information that, get, get a hold of me, please. Um, I'm working hand in hand with this uh, gentleman in the DEQ, see so if we can track it down. So there, they thought the township was spraying for mosquitoes. <laughs> if I was, I wouldn't be spraying out in the middle of the marsh. Um, okay, uh, music in the park is in full swing. Uh, and, and we also have a new event, it's called Free For All Wednesdays. And it's all moving over to our Clay Township Park this coming week, a couple days. Wednesday the 18th, we have this really cool dual duet playing. Alfie Jean and Fella Jack. And uh, we, could, we try to gear Wednesdays more for kids who are doing interactive things. Uh, like uh, we'll, we'll be doing a, uh, one of the Wednesday square dancing and, and that type of stuff. Uh, July 19th, one of our favorite bands, Burnwood, is playing. Uh, and then um, July 25th, the Wednesday, is Blues Rhythm Band. It's a local uh, blues and uh, string band. And uh, 26, Canagora Morgue. They changed their name. It used to be Liquor Fish. I don't know. Hard to keep track. Wednesday, this is hot. Wednesday, we have uh, a Beatles tribute band. It's Beatles in America uh, playing, and that's that's. We we're actually trying to get them to, to book a Thursday, and they couldn't. We could never do a Thursday, so we got them coming this Wednesday, uh, uh, Wednesday, August first, and August second is Ten Beach Drive, which that was the group that played here in our Browns Field. Uh, they are really good, they are really popular. We couldn't get them here, back here this year, but they're going to be over there August 2nd. And we started Music in the Park. I, we have someone sponsoring it. Free hot dogs till they run out for everybody. So We do have Music in the Park called Island Style here at Browns Field, and that starts at 6.30, not at 7. Uh, they're on Friday. Friday the 27th, 27th, we have a band called Renegade. They're awesome. They're sponsored by Dudek Insurance. And on uh, Friday, August 24th, we have Rock Steady, and that was uh, sponsored by Jennifer Sauvier so so State Farm. Uh, July 22nd, we still have some seats left for a bus trip to see the Tigers, one, two in a row, versus the Red Sox. It leaves 11 o'clock at the high school. It's $40 a person. You'll, that's the cheapest you'll be able to find go see a Tiger game and pay 30 bucks for parking down there. So that's all we have for that. Can I ask a question? Sure. So the hot dogs, is that every Thursday? And Wednesday. Wednesday and Thursday yep. for everything? Okay. Yep. Thank you. Okay. What to do on Wednesday and Thursday? Yeah. So new business. First we have uh, to accept a $200 donation. Uh, that was donated to the police. I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the $200 donation for the support. Support. Okay, motion to support. Any discussion? I know she wants to be anonymous, but uh, this gal, she, she moved out and uh, she was a big runner and she just she really wanted to uh, give something to the police to say thank you uh, for keeping her feeling safe and uh, and uh, she just wanted to uh, spread some goodwill because she thought that our police department did a good job. So, Okay, we have uh, support, motion to support. 
Uh, any more discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. <coughs> Next we have a, a board discussion on, uh, on our upcoming bond proposal. Let me, I had a little question, I know a lot of people have spoke on it, which was good. That's why we're here. I'm going to read the proposal. And then I, I typed up a two page, two and a half page thing, I'll, I'll read it. Um, and and it's a yes or no vote, of course. Shall the Township of Clay, St. Clair, Michigan, borrow the principal sum not to exceed $2 million and issue a general obligation unlimited tax bond over a period not to exceed 20 years from the date of in issuance to be used by the township for the purpose of paying the cost of acquiring and installing equipment for the fire department together with building and site improvements. That's a question mark, yes or no. The estimated millage to be uh, levied in 2018 is point 323 mills. The estimated simple average annual millage rate for the entire bond will be 0.257 mills. So that, that's, that's what, what's basically what's going to be on the, the ballot. The question is, okay, what's it going to cost me? 0.323 mills if your taxable value is $100,000, in other words, if you have a $200,000 home, your taxable value is $100,000, it's going to cost you $32.30 a year. As the home values go up in this, in this, uh, this, this time uh, period, the actual millage rate will go down. So the real dollars stay the same. Um, and uh, I had uh, a lot of conversations, you know, especially after uh, the open house here. <laughs> you know, someone asked me, well, Artie, can, can we just, you know, we know the fire department needs this. Can we just, instead of paying interest, can we just pay it off early? And the question is, no, it's a tax levy, and you cannot pay your taxes before you get the tax bill, basically. It's a tax levy. And uh, so, okay, well, we, we do some special assessments for, like, water projects for the county road, for instance. Uh, and we give them the option to pay that off early. Is it possible to do a special assessment township-wide? give the, the people the option to pay it off early or not. And I talked to both my bond attorney, our township attorney, and our bond uh, the guy that writes the bonds, our bond counsel. They also three said, no, you cannot. It's very specific what the, the state allows you to do a special assessment like that and, um, and not be a tax levy, uh, so to speak. I just said there is no way to do it that way. And someone asked, uh, well, why can't we do, assess everybody that has a dwelling in the whole township, 100 bucks. And personally, I mean, I, I asked my, the, the same people that question, and they said, well, you, you, you have to spread out the benefit equally. And most people would agree, if you have an $800,000 house, you're going to benefit more from a, a, a updated fire department than if you have a $75,000 house. So it's not fair to charge the same guy that has a $75,000 house 100 bucks and charge the guy that has an $800,000 house 100 bucks. It said, you know, it, 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 the residents, hmm? the residents, residents right? But it, 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 I, I, I don't want to argue right now. This is what I was told, and 
it does cost more to protect the larger houses versus the smaller house. You need larger, you need larger equipment. You need larger equipment. You need more training. You need more fire. It, it takes a, it takes a lot more things and uh, expertise to fight a three a, a fire in a three story building than it does in a in a, a small bungalow. So, what are we going to do with the fire, or, or with the money? First, we need to replace the fire truck sooner than later. A frontline fire truck has a year, a life expectancy of 20 years. You might get another 10 years out of a truck as a secondary or backup. Um, we have trucks that are over 20 and 30 years old as frontline trucks right now. And what our plan is to be replacing five trucks with actually four, downsizing our fleet. The older trucks do not have many new uh, federally mandated safety features that keep our, our firefighters, our heroes, safe while they're doing our jo the jobs for us. Um, and uh, what we're, we're looking at getting is, is two, two engines. One would be a, a, a snorkel with uh, it's basically a long ladder with a stick with a nozzle up there that's for a larger house to uh, get water on. A lot, of these, a lot of these homes on the island, especially the larger ones, where they're on a, we can't, we, with the equipment we have, we can't even get to it. Going over a bridge and stuff, we can't even get to it. This will allow us to do that. There is no vehicle or there is no ventilation system in the island station whatsoever. And the mainline ventilation system has not been maintained and also has to be replaced. It is uh, my OSHA requirements and we need these, these in place ASAP. It is against the law to have people sleeping overnight in a fire station without this ventilation. And Chuck, you are right, it was about 10 grand per, per hole. We have four stalls here that need it, and the main line we have seven. It comes out to 110. Uh, all our boat motors are in the life on our fire boats. And they have to be replaced by more efficient four-stroke engines. Uh, we are now running the old two-stroke engines. Uh, they have way more hours than, than uh, uh, we should should have on them, and they caught all this stuff has been costing us boy, so much to maintain every year. We've been spending 80 grand, 100 grand on, ma on maintenance. That's ludicrous. We have a fire truck on the mainland. One of the engines, the pump needs to be be rebuilt. It would cost us 50 grand to rebuild the pump. No, the truck isn't worth 50 grand. So, would you go do that? You know? I mean, that's the question we have to ask. Okay. Um, and then, yes, we do need some uh, uh, some uh, building upgrades, mostly on the island, the kitchen and the uh, bathrooms, and some offices. And we do need some uh, also some building upgrades on the um, on the mainland side. Chuck kind of kind of allude to it, you know, how did we get here? How did we get where we are today? The old board and, and, and fire department, they had a policy of buying used stuff. We would buy, we bought two, uh, actually we, we, at one time we had a new engine and uh, it, 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 it was rolled over in an accident. One of our firemen rolled it over, it got totaled. So what the old board and fire and uh, and fire department did, they went out and took that insurance money instead of buying a new engine. They bought two used ones from Chesterfield. And let me tell you, these things have been the POS ever since. It cost us tons of money, and uh, it's just not cost effective to to buy the, the, someone else's problems. I mean, it, it's just it doesn't work, especially for frontline. Um, equipment. Why a bond? <clears throat> um, and this board actually could have just raised the your, your millage 
0.32. It's not a big millage. The board could have just done it, but this board decided, let's put it out to, to ask the taxpayers if they want, want it or not. We could have just done it. So we believe that who receives the benefit of any government ser service should pay for it. <clears throat> and who does not receive the benefit shouldn't have to pay for it. This is hard to do a lot of times, but not so much in this case. The capital upgrades that will be done with this bond will, will, be, will benefit the township for at least 20 years, maybe longer. <clears throat> if, we, if we raise the taxes, uh, so, let me back up. So, so it's going to be a benefit to the people for 20 years. So is it fair like, okay, we, we, we charge all this up front, you know, the, you know, we'll pay for it in three years, and everyone's going to pay a lot of money for three years and get out of the interest rate. Well, okay, what if I, leave, I move in year four or sell my house? What if I, I, I move in year four? I paid for this 20-year benefit for this equipment. Someone new comes in my house. They buy our house. They're not paying a nickel for the next 15, 16 months. It's an asset of your house. I'm crying out loud. It, uh, yeah, well, it, you're going to be paying it's for an the asset. asset. It, your, value, it's your value will not go up because of this bond. I disagree. Well, okay. <laughs> List your house and, tell, and, put, and put another 20 grand on it. <laughs> so, anyhow. I don't think that your the value of your house, if you go to sell it, you can sell it for five grand more or whatever, because we have new fire trucks. The people who move in five years from now, they'll be receiving the benefit from all this fire equipment without paying for it. By which you can afford. It spreads the cost out more equally. Truck out of we need four. Well, I can tell you it's not 50000 to replace a pump because I do them all day long. Okay. That's the cost I have. With this bond, too, instead of doing a tax rate, as the, as the home's prices go up, the actual millage goes down. If we just levy a millage, that stays the same. And you'll be pouring, paying more as the values go up. What happens if we have a, another housing crisis and the values go down? That's, that's a, no one can tell the future. Right, right, and nobody can tell that their housing prices are going to go up. Right, but the real dollars you pay with a bond stays the same. <clears throat> the, the bond, the money with a bond is restricted. With a millage, it's not. The millage, it can go for operations, and that's why I think the millage should be for operations. The the money for a, a with for a regular taxes should be for operations. With the bond, is restricted. We can only spend it on capital improvements. It can't go towards wages. Can't go towards several other things. It can only go for capital improvements. So that's the advantages of a bond. Hmm? We need more than that. We need more than just more. Right, right. We, we have it in the budget. Well, why don't we have it then? I'll get to that. Again. Why isn't there a, a capital equipment replacement plan? Good question. There wasn't put. There should have been a capital replacement plan put in place 15 years ago. Never was. My intentions are. My intentions are the money we are saving, putting into fixing all this equipment, that will be diverted into a capital replacement plan for the future, so we can start one now. Can't. You know, should have been started 15 years ago. It wasn't. Nobody can go back in time. Um, let's see. Two, 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 two. We went over how it will affect the island. But 
As far as, as your question, why isn't the island staffed? It's not economic. It's not economic. It is not economic. We have $480,000 for wages in this year's budget. We can't, we don't have them. We are seeking to hire new people all the time. We, and it's just not a matter of hiring them. It takes a year, to, almost a year to train them if they're not trained. They have to become an EMT. They have to have fire one. They have to have fire two. And it takes, what, 20 weeks, to, huh? It takes seven months to become an EMT, and it takes four, or, I'm sorry, seven months to be an EMT, and four months to be a, to get your fire one, fire two. <coughs> 11 months of training. Right now, we have people that are EMT, but they're not fire one or fire two. Or we have fire one and fire two, but they're not EMT. Good news, we're getting there, we're getting closer. The next couple of weeks, this, this island's going to be staffed about 70% of the time. Couldn't say that three months ago. Could not say that in 2015. Before, it was staffed 30 hours a week before the SAFER grant. Yes, it was. I had payroll records. It was staffed 30 hours a week before the SAFER grant. We are staffing it more now than we did then. I have numbers, I don't, I try not to get emotional about it, but the numbers, we might have had uh, Brian Sears or someone just hanging out there, and, I was, and Mike Harry, well Mike Harry retired, Brian Sears is working someplace else. We don't have that luxury anymore. We have to pay someone now. You might have, you might have mistaken that, but it was 30 hours a week of duty shifts in 2015 before the SAFER grant. How many new people have What's that? How many new people have we hired in the past five months? Oh, gee, uh, six. Six or seven? Uh, I know we're looking at, what, three more? I have five more applications right now that we're looking at. Yeah, we, we're, we're looking at three, three more applications right now. Uh, we finally, you know, and it's been a process to attract new people. You know, they, it's, it's there, right? They, they went and they got a, a union. And, and before, when you're, it took over a year to uh, negotiate the contract, during that, everything had to stay status quo. They needed more money. I wanted to give them more money, but we couldn't until it was done. And we just settled it, making them the highest paid part-time Fire department in the county. What did they make? Thirteen. Is <laughs> it's, it's, it's the highest paid part-time fire department in the county. We pay more per duty shift than anybody else in the county that does 24/7. Now you said it's going to take 20 years for this to be paid off. Whatever your bar. The bond. Yes. Yes. Okay, and in 20 years' time, these trucks are going to be 20 years old. Are we going to have to do this all over mm -hmm. again? Hopefully, yes. hopefully we'll have a capital replacement plan in place. And then so fire, they won't. fire hydrants will have to be replaced for the new equipment because they might not fit the old fire we, hydrants. We always update fire, and that's what the water department does that. Yeah. Yeah. How many fires have we had this year so far? What's that? How many fires calls we've had? We had uh, about 60 last year. 60? Both on the mainland and on the island between the mainland and the island. 60. For just fire? For just fire. For just fire. How many on the island did you have? I don't know. We'd have to look. I could get that number for you. Chuck? Are you? This was about the funds. Uh, Operation, operation for the replacement for the capital replacement. Keep referring to going back to they didn't get a replacement budget when we started. But you know, we talked about this when I was on the board. Right, and there wasn't money yeah. then. There wasn't money then. There isn't money now. Hopefully there is. Now you're floating this bond to try to do that. We're getting yeah. something. Like I said, Chuck, the money that we 
are spending on fixing this old equipment, that, that's going to drop significantly. We'll divert that money into a capital replacement plan. But now it's a crisis. It's, it's, yes. How do we get there? The 20-year bond, and we pay the 0.33 mills. At the end of 20 years, is that bond retired? Yes. It does not say that. Can I see the bond offering statement? Uh, yeah. <coughs> I'd like to see I'll that. get it to you. I'd like to see that. Yep. Post it on next door. I think it'd be a great place to put it. Okay, I'll give it to you and you can post it. Perfect, I'll do it. Okay. You said the um, you could raise the 0.32 mills because that's available right now and it's mm -hmm. already been passed. So if this bond passes, or even if it doesn't, are you saying you are not going to raise that 0.32 in the next five years? I'm, I'm, I'm saying if it doesn't pass, well, we'll have to go back to the drawing board and figure something out because we do need new trucks. How many here thinks we don't need trucks? No, I think we do. I don't think anybody yes. we do. Right, all right, we need new trucks. My concern, though, it, it, it's, just, it's just a question of how, how to pay for it. Yeah, my concern it would be that if we were to pass this bond, that then you can come back and utilize this .32 that's available in the mills already. We, we, we may have to for operations. Okay. <laughs> is it possible that... that uh, you, went, you said you went to two bond guys and asked some questions about this alternative budget. Yep. Is it just possible that if you went to somebody that wasn't trying to sell you bonds, that they might have a different opinion? I, w I went to our regular township attorney, too. So. <clears throat> Could you come up with the amount of money that is collected on a regular tax roll? is appropriated to run the fire department. $704,000 a year. All right. So if that's the question, if that's the case, why aren't we using that money to do some of these things? It's spent on training, on most of it's spent on personnel. It, it's spent on, on keeping the trucks run. I mean, it's spent. Gas. I understand it's spent. But I also know I get my water bill. I, I use fifteen dollars worth of water, and I get an eighty-dollar water bill. <laughs> yep. okay. I don't want to see that going on with this. Oh, uh, but you know, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Uh, if we go out and get some contracts to get some of this work done, and ask every, everybody to pull it up and pay for it, everybody would be better off. A whole thing. Well, that's what we're trying to do with the bond. Yeah, no, you're not. When I started my house on the island, my taxes were $11. Dollars. $11. Dollars. Well, I'm sure it was $11 back. $3,500. Before we consolidated the fire department, how many years ago was that? Five, six years? What's that? We consolidated the two fire I think it was consolidated around 2007, 2006. Didn't the, the trucks, the original two fire trucks that were Yeah, and they're here now. To a special what? Assessment? Uh, I'm not sure how they did it back then, but they are here on the island now. And back then the the island back then was paying about two and a half mills for fire protection. And right now you are paying one point six seven percent. I mean, 1.67 mills. You were paying almost a full mill more back then for fire protection. To staff that this island 24/7, we are going to have to raise that up, that special up to, to, to staff it. Yes, yes, we will to staff it. No, they're paying for you. Yeah, two thirds, two thirds, two thirds is over there. One third is here. And we're paying our share. Yes, you're paying your share. Why are we the yep. highest paid part-time fire department? 
that you found. I'm sorry, what? Why are we at 13 bucks, the highest paid part-time fire department that you found anywhere around? What is it about this area that makes them want to demand that much more money? Well, everyone, do you, do you think $13 is too much? I don't. I just want you to explain to me why everybody else is everybody. Like everybody else is twelve five, twelve twelve dollars and fifty cents. Oh, oh. Okay. We have a union now. I, 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 I believe me. They wanted a lot more. You want to run into a burning building for thirteen bucks? Right. I, I, I have no problem paying our guys thirteen dollars an hour. No, none whatsoever. I just wonder if it has something to do with the nature of the township. And you know the the way you have to fight fires, or the, the, the spread out nature of the swamp, and all that stuff. No. So. Hey, does anybody on the board have anything to add? It's supposed to be a board discussion. <laughs> <laughs> this is obviously a really important issue, right? It's, it, these uh, these proposals try and offer some transparency on on where the money could be spent, right? It's not an Artie decision. It's not a Chris O'Regan decision. The board decision. Right? Uh, it's a board decision to propose the bond. It's your decision to vote whether to approve it or not. So what we're trying to do is gain insight, valuable discussion, which we've had a tremendous amount of but also offer the flip side of it. And if you did support it, here's the things that could, could potentially um, and will be funded. If you choose not to support it, then we're going to have to have more deliberations to figure out how to pay for the fire equipment that we all kind of agree that we need. Now, whether we need it all at one time, whether we need to stage it, there you go. There's options, but but there has to be discussion. And it has to start somewhere. So this is the deal, right? And, and it's going to be up to all of us to get to the polls and vote on as to whether or not we can support this type of policy. One important thing, we'll be putting out for bid for four trucks. And we're, we're already starting initially talking to uh, three or four of the, of the suppliers. They're, they're saying if we buy four trucks at once, There'll probably be a 25 to 30 percent discount on that contract versus buying them one at a time. That's significant money. That's almost one truck. So suppose we all pitched in a bunch of money and we just donated. Would that be it? Would that? I mean, here, here you are. We're giving you a charitable donation for this equipment. Is that against the state law? No. We need two million dollars. All right. Let's get a job. We need two million dollars. I just bought a bake sale. Two million dollars will only give you four trucks. It doesn't leave room for anything else. But I want my name on the building. I want to get really good trucks for Pat's sakes. We'll have it embroidered in the seats. But you don't get two million right off the bat, do you? Yeah. You do. But that only buys you four trucks. What about all the other repairs? We can do it all for $2 million. Each truck is 500 You say uh, you need four trucks. They're saving 30%. Right? Yep. Each engine yeah. is so 500 guys know you. No. Right? Pardon me? Each engine. Right. Each 500. truck is 500 Each engine. You're engine. saying truck. Don't mistake engine. truck. OK. So we're not looking to purchase five engines. So what are you looking to purchase? Well, I believe there's a couple mini bumpers in there, Chief. Yes. Yes. Right? Which the island could desperately use a new mini bumper. About 250, 300 then? Yep. Okay. So two engines plus three mini bumpers is how much? Oh, go ahead, Jen. The little engine that could. Yeah. <laughs> but, but in conjunction with that, this, this bond proposal attempts to spell out the rest of the But the thing the is, needs. is Rome wasn't built in a day. Okay. So Fair enough. You can't build Rome in one and day. And you can exercise that right in voting groups. Absolutely. Sure. And you're saying five. Earlier they were saying we're four. Going four. Sure. I'm sorry. It's four. four. Okay. Thank you. Oh, replacing five fire trucks. I'm sorry. So we're getting two engines and two mini puppers? Pumpers? More than likely, yep. 
Okay, then uh, I'm sorry. Can I just yeah, sleep sure. for just a quick second? So we, we've gone. My name is Cindy Pilato. Um, we, you've only just come to 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 the township within probably is it only been like within the past thirty days or so. With, with, and basically are shoving this $2 million down everybody's throat. We're not shoving it down wanting anybody's us, throat. Want, We're us, asking a question. You're asking us to vote for this, but yes. you're not coming to us with options, uh, and other options as to how to potentially pay for this. You've already got, you, you've just you just said, you already have bids out for this, this equipment that you don't even have the money for. Mm -hmm. So in the event that you don't get this $2 million, those bids go to basically go to the wayside because now you've got to scramble and come up with something else. I, I feel as though there hasn't been enough time to uh, really, really investigate other options before this quick vote in August is expected for this for, for this money that you're asking for. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't put five options on the ballot. Oh, but you can have other options. There should be other options. <laughs> we can't do a multiple choice on the ballot. <laughs> I'm sorry. We, we can't have a multiple choice on the ballot. We have to have, do you want this? Yes, no. Um, uh, I don't know how else to do it other, other than that. Um, if it fails, you know, we're going to have to go back and, and, and look at it and see what we can do. I, I don't know yet. Um, you know, it was six months ago we were in here and talking about, you know, staffing the, the island 24-7, and everyone says, we'll pay more money, we want it staffed 24-7, we'll pay more money. Yeah, for that we will. Right. But now, we need a ventilation system so they can sleep. We need fire trucks so they, they, they're safe while they're fighting the fires and, and we can get, get, the, get to the fires. Again, I don't think that there is uh, anybody in this room or probably in this council that's, that's denying the fact that these things need to be done. Okay. The, 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 it's, it's how we, how we get there okay. and, the, and, and other options that, that could be proposed to, to right. get there. And, and you, you know, you personally, and this is just me, if I had a special assessment of $100 one time to pay this year on my taxes, I'd pay that, opposed to paying $32 a year for 20 years, whether or not I sell my house three years from now that or, gives or 20, 20 years. That would give us 20% there. Well, how, what, what, did, what did you, I, I'm sorry, it was 300, wasn't it like you assessed it, it would have to be like 300 and some dollars per household? Four years. For four, over four years mm -hmm. to, to pay our $400 per taxable per, per, per household. Taxable parcel. For taxable parcel. They're covered by fire. They have a dwelling. They should, have a, they should be paying part of it. Mm -hmm. I agree. But I, the, it gets complicated. <laughs> and and it's our money I, I understand. I understand. The person who lives in a seventy-five thousand dollar house, husband and wife are working two jobs, trying can barely make things work. You know, they have mortgage, they have house insurance, car insurance. They get, they're raising a couple kids. They're gonna. You want them to pay the same as the person who has an eight hundred thousand dollar house doesn't owe a penny on their house, or or whatever. I mean, do 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 you, do you think it's fair for them to pay the same? Absolutely, it's an equally shared capital asset. But that's right. Right. But the 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 more expensive house you have, that's socialism. This, this is what they'll say at the tax tribunal, this is what they'll say at the tax tribunal and probably win, that the, the more expensive home has a greater loss, it's a, it's a loss and reward analysis. 
Let me ask you this. Do you, do you think they should pay the same in home insurance? That's why we have insurance. Yes. Right. I know that. But, but just to do a flat assessment, spread out equally. For the capital asset. That's not it. You pay for value-based assessments for but operations. It's, it's hard to spread out over the people in the in the lower income homes. Would you think the life of a person in an eight hundred thousand dollar home is worth more than the one in the seventy five thousand dollar home? No, I said there's more property. There's I know, more but loss. We're talking about lives too. No, we're we're yes we are, and we're talking about property being protected. But and it fire. Is I mean, whatever. You know what? We just may have to agree to disagree. And you can vote no, I'm sorry. I have a hard time charging somebody lower income the same as somebody who... It happens every day. They buy gas, they I, buy milk, that's they buy right. everything else. Everybody pays the same thing. Why okay. should this be any, any different? All right. If that's the case, sir, where you're coming from about no equality with respect to people, okay? If my house is worth 450000 I want four votes in the township. You know what? That's above my pay grade. I, I can't even vote here. That's yeah, right. You can't vote here either. Sure. So, does anybody else have anything with the, on the board? Okay. All right, thank you. Next, we have a discussion for the board on, um, on an ordinance for a, a, a no vape smoking ordinance. This ordinance. This came because of the school. They have a policy of no uh, no vape uh, electronic cigarettes, I guess they, they're called, um, in the schools. And, and there's, it's having a hard time being enforced in the school. They, can, uh, they, they wanted something with a little bit of monetary to enforce it, and they, they came to us. Elegnac actually just passed this not too long ago. This is Elgnac's ordinance. I took Elgnac off and put Clay Township on it. I just want to get the board's opinion before I, I turn it over to the attorney. Mm -hmm. So the schools need it. The schools would need it passed by us because the schools are in Clay Township. Yes, the schools are in Clay Township. Um, and apparently there is a, a quite a problem with uh, kids vaping in the school. And uh, the, our school resource officer was all about it, and so was the school administration. And uh, basically it says, uh, you know, you, you can't vape in public places if you're a minor, and you can't sell to minors uh, in the township. Uh, all the materials for uh, vaping. So if it kind of looks good for the board, I'll, I'll go ahead and get it to our attorneys and, uh, and have them do a once through and, uh, and see what they say. Any, any discussion on this or? But we have to uh, pass this ordinance for you to take it to No, me, to no, I, I, just for this is just a review. Review, okay. And I'll, I'll take it to our attorney. I'll probably tweak it a little bit. I put in schools. I should in public schools. Um, uh, if someone's having a private school, I don't think we have jurisdiction there. Um, so uh, does the board uh, is interested in this and want me to go forward with it? Well, I think it's a win-win situation. However, I'd like to add, uh, add who is going to do the enforcement. Uh, well, our research officer. What, one? Well, we, I mean. You're the same problem as we have all the other enforcements around here. Well, <laughs> as for in the school, we do have an officer in the school. And, and the teachers are, I mean, it's when a child is vaping in school, it's very, there's a, I mean, you see them if you pass them with the car, you can see the whole car is filled with a cloud. I mean, they can see that when the kids are going into the bathroom, when they walk in the bathroom, they can see a cloud. What policies do they have in place now? They, they have policies and, and, and they can only do discipli disciplinary, and, uh, but they want something where they can't enforce monetary penalties where we can. I don't think we can 
enforce monetary penalties to a kid under 16 years old. Their parents. It goes to their parents. There you go. That, that's who gets it. It's their parents. I agree. Mike? Yes. Why does it say only Mike? Shouldn't it be adults also? Adults can smoke. They can vape. I can't. In the schools? Well, not in the schools. Yeah. Well, we, it's, got, it's got to be tweaked. I'm just t t asking the board if there's interest. I'll go ahead and get it tweaked. So, give me a thumbs up, thumbs down. Thumbs up. Thumbs up. Make a motion to move forward. What's the monetary penalty? Uh, can't go over 500. I think it starts at 100. I think 100, 300, and 500. That's how Mr. Reiner's usually. I think are. there was a motion on the table to move forward with yep. this, and I support it. Okay. Any more discussion? You bring it back to us. Yep. Now. There's more information. Okay. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay. Aye. Anyone opposed? Motion passes. Next, we have an approval for the. Uh, Awarding the county water line bid. Uh, we did receive seven bids and uh, they came in under our estimate by about, um, I don't know, this one's about $1,700, uh, $170,000 under our estimate. So I'm looking for um, approval of the board. You can see the letter from Project Control Engineering. Uh, recommending that we do uh, award the bid, and that would be to uh, T.R. Piper's Act. Well, I have a question on the uh, uh, company that is awarded this contract. Yeah. And have we done a, or completed a Dun & Bradstreet well, we've we've used them in the past. We we we've, we've uh, used them in the past for work, and uh, and they've they've done very well for us. John, you want to? Uh, the engineering firm has reviewed that. Yes, Mark. Um, they have a bond. Yes, bonded. Very good company. Is the water is the uh, existing water line going to remain intact while they're replaced in the new water Absolutely. line? Absolutely. It's part of the. Do we have any representatives here from the county? No. Association? No, but they're all for it. Yeah. I don't see anybody here. Is anybody here from PCE? No, they, they asked me if uh, they wanted me to come. I, I told them, well, if, if not, we could probably postpone it and have them in the next meeting. But uh, um, I was hoping if you had had any questions, we would have been able to field them sooner than well, it was kind of hard because we didn't see the bid contracts oh, well, until recently. So is the uh, total estimated cost of this project the one million one hundred eighty-two thousand? Yeah, that's what. That's, that's, that's what it is. Right. The the bid is nine hundred sixty-eight thousand nine eighty-five. was 160,000 under the engineer's estimate. Yeah. So. So, Superintendent Barry, you said the Colony um, Association did review this bid, and they are fine with it? They were very happy with the bid, yes. And they discussed their timeline, and then they're good with everything with this project? Yes. Okay. And then this is also your recommendation? Absolutely. I will make a motion to approve the Colony Waterline bid to go to TR Papers Act Company from China Township. Uh, for the bid in the amount of $968,985. Support. Okay, motion to support. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Hardy Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Bashard? Yes. Sandy Kufo? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hillman? Yes. The motion passes. 
Next, we have a resolution request uh, St. Clair County for uh, local road uh, funding for Starville Road. In here, I don't see the what it is. I, I did the application for uh, Starville Road, and uh, the, the estimate was going to be costs are going up, asphalt's going up, uh, and this w work wouldn't happen until next year. The uh, estimate is about 140,000 for a, a two-inch uh, asphalt on Starville, and uh, this uh, local match will at least give us 50,000 towards that. Like uh, just like the, the work on St. John's Drive is going to start soon. Uh, we, we we received one of these uh, local matches to repave St. John's <coughs> Drive, as we did with all the roads down by Sassy Marina, as we did for Field and Holland, and um, Field Holland, yeah. Oh, see, well, well, yeah, I just mentioned St. John. And we did get a $100,000 match for the culvert on Folkert Road. So um, if, we, if, if we get this approved, uh, I'm six in a row, and usually townships go in and get it every other year. So uh, I'm, I'm pretty. This one actually scores higher because it's connecting two other other roads. But like I said, the, I'm estimating the cost by 140,000. So so it, at the end of the day, next budget year it will cost uh, the township 90,000 for that road. Are so you looking for a motion to support? Yeah, pass a resolution. So, Mr. Supervisor, I'll make a motion to support resolution. 2018-33, the resolution related to request for local road system funding assistance. Support. I said related, I'm sorry, it's relative. Okay, I apologize. And the, motion <coughs> the motion also authorizes um, Supervisor Bryson to sign the application on behalf of Clay Township. Thank you. Can you edit your, uh, your motion to allow me to to oh, absolutely. Uh, sign the yeah, sign also the authorization. Supervisor Bryson to support and authorize the resolution. Okay. The motion to support. Any more discussion? I just say it's a it's, it's a good thing that I mean, so far this program we've probably gotten three hundred thousand dollars in uh, in grant money for uh, doing our roads, and for the most part, most of our roads are in pretty decent shape. So. All right, motion. Uh, roll call vote, please. Joanne Shirky? Yes. Mark Brashear? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hilton? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Motion passes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. <laughs> Pass without you. <laughs> Pass without you. Next, we have our um, contract for additional duties above statutory duties for our uh, treasurer. Christy uh, Hilton, and uh, we have the same contract for myself and uh, the clerk, Cindy, um, but this basically does, it protects the board that uh, um, things will, won't get carried away or, or abused too much. Um, we had issues with an old clerk and an old treasurer where they just decided not to come to work, and this allows, um, with this contract, it allows this board to take away a large part of their pay. So that's uh, the whole. Um, but I plan to come to work. <laughs> but you, you plan to come to work, and by the way, she's doing an awesome job. Yeah. Right. Well, how it works, the state state law. When you come into office, whatever the, the first year of the term is, you cannot, a board cannot lower your salary below that. So what we do, we, we, we split our, our salaries up and statutory duties, because you have statutory duties you have to do. If you don't do those statutory duties, it's a long process but we could actually have somebody removed for failure for doing their statutory duties. Um, now, we do a lot more things than our statutory duties, a lot more. My, my statutory duties are very small. Um, 
but uh, you know, I'm, believe me, I'm a busy guy. <coughs> and most of my job is not statutory stuff. And uh, so what this basically says, or allows us, we can adjust someone's non-statutory salary as the board sees fit, and it gives the expectations. You know, you're not gonna, you're not gonna take off for Florida for two months. Uh, you know, we expect you to, to, to come to work and, and everything else. And, and this is basically the same contract I have and, and Cindy has. Uh, spells out, uh, spells out the, her, her, her current duties performed and her statutory duties. Like she has 23 duties that she's doing that aren't statutory. Well, the first nine aren't statutory. Oh, okay. All right. I could stand corrected. But um, like balancing our checkbook, our cash every month, with before her, it has never been done in this township for 25 years. And Chrissy complains when she can't get it down to, what? I can't find $28. So, and she finds it. But this just gives the, it holds us more accountable to the board. Does anybody have any questions? Is there an evaluation for uh, any of the uh, people that uh, on the board that do uh, receive uh, compensation for statutory duties? Well, it's the trustees' job to evaluate them. Thank you. I have a question. I have a, a, a concern because this is an elected position. The treasurer is elected. And this contract, three, four, five, six, reads like a union contract for employees. They are not a union employee. Vacation days and all. Did Sick you read the person. first paragraph? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. The first section discusses um, um, it's between the Township of Clay uh, for duties contingent on election by the people and are for no definite period and may, regardless of the time and manner of payment of wages and salary, be terminated at any time with or without cause and without previous notice. So this is all contingent on her election by the people, which is the same as this argument right now. So in other words, if we're not reelected, we don't automatically continue doing these additional duties. I, this contract is then null and void. I understand that. But but it says that, you know it says you know okay vacation time and and sick time yeah it, it, it limits how many days she can take off. But as an elected official, all she has to do is do her statutory duties, right. and she can take off as much time as she wants. Right wants. for the so so. Why are because we, this is for non-statutory, so if she leaves for two months and somebody else has to do those duties, we can take this money from her and pay that person. Okay, well, it's, it's, uh, it's kind of muddled here. For example, before I was appointed on the board, there was um, the absence of the clerk for months. Someone else was I doing payroll and HR. I understand that. I went through all that. Yes. So they had to pay somebody else to do it, but they couldn't take the money from the previous clerk because there wasn't separated. Right. This allows us to lower our salaries if we're not performing. It holds us more accountable. Based on my previous comment, on the evaluations and uh, knowing that the treasurer duties and job is quite a task and Christy has done a remarkable job um, fulfilling her duties I'll make a motion to approve the additional duties as well as the compensation for the treasurer support she's getting okay motion support any more discussion Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Yes, Hang on, sir. Yes. Yep. Hang on, sir. This, is, this appears to me to be like a partial contract, if you will, right? So where, where, where does, where's the statutory contract? Does, does it coincide with this? Statutory contract is the, with the people. Like the same one you have. Okay. 
So we, we they don't need our we don't need to approve. We can't fire that per se. Yeah, you can't fire me. The people has to fire me. Are there any other parts of this agreement that we're not seeing? Or is the exhibit A that I should have had attached, which is why Christy provided that additional paper today that has your list of duties. Yeah. It was the back page and it must have fallen off when I did the board packet. Okay. When there I it is. It seven times it wasn't there. So. so her base salary plus this potential statutory supplement make up her whole package? Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Any more discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, please. Mark Bouchard? Yes. Sandy Kufel? Yes. Chris O'Regan? Yes. Christy Hillman? Yes. Artie Bryson? Yes. Cindy Valentine? Yes. Joanne Shirky? No. Okay, motion passes. Okay, next, we have board member comments. Cindy? I'm all set. Okay. Mark, how are you doing down there? Well, I certainly appreciate everyone's uh, comments today. They are not going to go on, uh, on, on to a deaf ear. I'll uh, bring some of that stuff to the Planning Commission. We are working on uh, a few of those items as far as we discussed with uh, setbacks and uh, waterfront observations uh, and a lot of other things, too. So, again, thank you very much for the comments. Joanne? It's always very good to uh, have so many people come and express their opinions and uh, it gives us a lot of insight so that we can move forward in the interest of our our voters our people so appreciate you all coming tonight thank you sandy i just want to thank everyone for coming out and voicing your opinions it's always nice to come over to the island and see a room full of people and no matter what you want to speak about we enjoy hearing it I've always been a believer that um, the best way to get to the best solution is through constant discussions, and that's what we do here, so thank you very much. Uh, ten people came up and spoke today. Ten people gave their opinions on different topics, brought to light different issues around the community. Um, if we had that support on the mainland that we do over here, I think we'd, we'd create a, a, a more unified township. So. Thank you for the participation, your input, uh, knowledgeable discussions. Uh, we're supposed to be your voice. We're, we're elected officials that are supposed to represent you, your thoughts, your opinions. Um, so I know everybody wants to come down on Artie about the fire department and the bond issue. Um, what he's done and what the board's done is brought to light some needs of both the mainland and the island. doesn't mean you have to support them doesn't. But, you know, everybody tries to, to ride on Artie a little bit on that, and, and that's, that's his job. That's our job, is to bring to light the needs of the township going forward. Because if we didn't bring that up, and we had a catastrophic failure on the island, well, things would be, the conversation would be a little different then. So, I appreciate your input, your insight. I've uh, made myself available before and I continue to do so. Uh, we want to be a reflection of you, your thoughts, your ideas, as long as they represent the majority population. So, thank you. Uh, I just want to remind everyone the township is normally, normal hours are Monday through Thursday, 8 to 6, but we will be open on Friday, September 14th, from 9 to 5 for tennis collection this year. <laughs> <laughs> she never has fun. She never has fun fun announcements. Well, thank you for voting for us for like three more meetings on the island, so we don't have yes. to go across. That's no problem. That's why we did it. That's why we'll come across. Um, yeah, I just want to say it's always good to come here. And yes, we are what five meetings yes. this year. We were two, so uh, it, it's always a good thing. And uh, still, I. I need your phone number. I'll give you a call tomorrow okay. on, on, on a few things. That was very interesting. That uh, is dead in the water, which actually I just learned that. Um, it's, it's good hearing everybody's input, um, for sure. And you know what? Don't we live in a great community? Yes. We do, don't we? That's what, what one thing we can always agree on. So, All right. Anything else? Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All in favor, aye. Thanks for coming, everybody.